welcome thanks thanks for joining us bro let's um kind of kick into the conversation so there's a couple things that i actually want to ask you about um the first being what got you into art i just naturally just went to it i don't think i got into it i think it got into me somewhere along the line i liked hanging out in the art room but yeah i didn't study art i just there was an art room and i hanged out in it it was like alternative education you know i didn't take it as a subject metro yeah that was the school right that's the school yeah could you tell me a little bit about metro your experience there yeah it's like kind of a school for people that don't fit in school and so a lot of the people were naughty but some of these people are just excel i was in the naughty department <laughs> and um so so it's like a democracy kind of set up so students can vote on things and have power as much power as a teacher so you can respect your teacher in a way that you respect your friend which means that it's easier to talk to them because you don't call them mr or mrs or sir mm. or neil or isabel what year was this again it would be like maybe 96 to 98 or 99 i don't know somewhere around there why because they've closed down that school way yeah it was like the education review office and kind of the same stuff that they do to other schools um i don't know some big giant institution something or other they don't want people doing teaching in a different way i guess yeah and so they made a big deal out of students smoking cigarettes and yeah, yeah, yeah. that didn't work and they made a deal of students not going to class and that didn't work and they made a deal out of everything that they could for every year that they could until the teachers wore themselves down from defending themselves and eventually the whole thing just went belly up i've heard you say it multiple times before you went to that school you you were living in Hakaringa. yeah yeah how did how did you end up in central my dad lived in central I don't know why. I, we were living in Pakaranga. But you guys moved? Is that... yeah, yeah, we moved when I was going to school. So yep. I used to catch the bus there. And then we went Greyland. There was a lot of comp, it was like a family. And then we moved into the city, I guess. Reasons probably be my mum's more than mine. Yep. You come from a massive family. Like the, I've got six sisters and two wow. brothers and lots of boyfriends and girlfriends uh, and nephews and ne- nieces yeah. and other people just sort of become a part of your family because... that's massive that's so many siblings yeah it's, yeah it is <laughs> it's good i like it and so after you went to metro what was the kind of next step i took what i called the big relax and i took a year off i wanted to know i actually didn't want to do anything Mm. And so I didn't. Year after that, my mum said you should do something. So I took a animation course. Mm. Where was that? It was in Queen Street, in town. And I did one year of it, and it wasn't very fun at all. And um, it was when it had first started up, so you know, it was a, a bit of a see how this goes kind of thing i learned a lot there i guess but i didn't do very well there either i think they were training us to do cell animation and like it's like a three-year course and i did one year and didn't go back didn't like it yeah and so what next after that i liked doing the big nothing so i I sort of stuck to the big nothing and i'm still in it big nothing and i think it's better because know anything i don't think anyone does so after you did a year of the animation at that point were you already doing graph yeah yeah so were you you doing you must have been doing graph at high school right yeah 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 i I was confused about graffiti man like i knew and did graffiti when i was in pakaranga but when you know when writers talk about when did you start and they always have a specific date i don't have a specific date from when i started tagging yeah 
like using spray paint and shit. Uh, but I have a specific date uh, sort of in my head, which is like pretty much 97 was when I, the, I, I did a thing that watch out the wind can change. And so I started off mocking graffiti and made a mock, I tagged Big Mac, like the hamburger. And I thought I was mocking everyone. It's just that once you start painting like that, watch out the wind will change. And suddenly I was really devoted to graffiti before I could, and that's why I have to put it, okay, 97, I really fell in love with graffiti. Who, who was the um, first kind of two or three people that you started painting with at that time? I was painting with Vincent and a guy called Sam Homan who wrote Tone and uh, Vinny Vino and uh, we met Gasp, Sims. I would paint with SQ at school but we wouldn't paint together maybe until, or maybe we painted at school such a long time ago I can't mm. remember but I had lots of friends a lot of everybody in that period of time it felt like was just na naturally a part of it yeah, yeah. It's, it's what people did and so f from developing some of those friendships at what point did you step into the kind of community of K Road all of the time yeah. it's like it, from being at school I was on K Road yeah. yeah so that's the same thing as it's like I don't know where I don't, I don't know if I'm devoted to K Road in the same way graffiti, but because one's a type of sport or, a, hmm. or an art movement, the other is just a road, and that's all it is. But the thing about locations and ground is some roads are like very attractive and carry power. And K Road's one of them. So I've always been there, there's nowhere else to go. I live in Auckland. What are you going to do on Ponson B Road? You can't afford a SBQR pizza <laughs> And what, what do you think was your greatest um, experience in graffiti during that period of time? Not a specific event, but I think just the, uh, having a feeling in your heart, like that you're touching on something which feels maybe to me and like profound or something, and anything that happened within my friend group or outside of my friend group very much took over everything that I think about the way one person paints over another and I would just be fanatic yeah it's like a fanatic a fanatic thing yeah, mm. and when we think about this kind of idea of the graph community you've always kind of gravitated a bit more towards characters is that right I know you do pieces yeah. too um, was there any reason why you you opted to do characters instead of like your typical yeah, traditional piece? Default and budgetness, and any time that anyone gives you a compliment, I think it's a nice feeling, so you maybe go in search of another compliment. And because I don't really have that much paint and I'm not an expert thief, I'm an opportunist. Yep. And if everyone's going to go painting, you have no paint, well, you get to do the characters. It's a Interesting. Fair, fair trait. Yeah, yeah. You know? Were you always interested in um, comic books and illustration and things like that, kind of? Yeah. At an early age? Yeah, all, all of the time. And I think that's another one of the things. Like, I've always loved Asterix, but when you start getting pubic hair, suddenly the X Men, <laughs> you know, the X Men, you know, you become a fanatic. You become obsessive. Okay, top five cartoons, not in any order. Asterix, Tintin. Uh, tie. Yeah. Uh, I like I like a lot of Marvel comics. Yeah. I like um, Love and Rockets and Eight Ball. X Men animated series. Oh, for the De television cartoons. Television cartoons. Oh man, all of them blur into one, and some of them were more significant than others. When Channel Three came out, they had Ninja Turtles, and everybody talked about the Ninja Turtles. But it also had the, the Ghostbusters cartoon. Mm, yeah. I very, I very much like the Ghostbusters cartoon. I have a strange attraction to Smurfs. Not mm -hmm. a, a sexual attraction, like a yeah, yeah. I look at Smurfs and drawn to that. Yeah, yeah, they make me feel funny. Same with this, those like what are they called? Those they've got eyes and they've got snorks. Snorks make me feel funny, and they have bubble gum. So yeah. I think I got like you know bubble gum tattoos and um, a sugar rush and a position and a sticker and 
then you get also an image of a, f- a friendly round-headed big-eyed thing they live under the sea and that can capture your mind for a hmm. amount of time in terms of like say comics in new zealand what are some or who are some key people that you kind of turn to and saying yeah Dylan Horrocks, Tim Kidd, they knock me out the gate. Yeah. Tim's got this, this like fluid style. It's really nice to look at his drawings and sort of slapstick movement. Everything moves, but a lot of it's placed inside of places like libraries and stuff like that. So there's anxious and nervous energy as well. Mm. And it's really humorous and quite beautiful. And then Dylan is a great storyteller and, and, and is a great storyteller too, you know, just with different different techniques and different styles and different ways to completely catch you. So, yeah. and, and, and is a great storyteller too, you know, just with different different techniques and different styles and different ways to completely catch you. So yeah. I, I love it. Once you've like two pages in, you're in another world. And it, because it's made by drawings, that world doesn't be dictated by your mind. So no longer are you wondering what Huckleberry Finn looks like. You know, you, you've got something for you. And I, I get obsessed on just one panel. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I just look at one panel. Were, were you formally trained to draw i don't think so how many hours do you draw a day five six and eight wow but that's because i do that yep draw yeah yeah, i draw and if i don't have to draw i draw i love it when i don't have to draw because then i can draw much better because i love drawing but if i have to draw i don't draw so well because i have to do what i'm told yep what type of work do you create I don't know. What types of um, stories, maybe, do you like to tell in your work? Because you do some incredible illustrations. I think I'm trying to talk about things that have an effect and I'd like to exploit when I was a little while ago, maybe some symbols. Hmm. And then I realized the symbols, I don't have to thrash them because everything is a symbol regardless. And so I only ever look at what I can see and I think you're a great observer yeah it's yeah but it's not like I wouldn't draw that bird and lamppost but later on I will draw a bird and lamppost <laughs> yeah you know? what was that most recent one that you did of the you said you created an illustration of like a track side some some guys yeah. hanging out of track side what's what was the inspiration for that how did you even conceptualize that piece of work first I did make a map and then I found that the map was a map um, a dream scape kind of because you know when then you're in a dream and you're like oh this is the house i grew up in and then you turn your head and you're in the school pool and then you turn your head again and it's like a long corridor that is like maybe your dad's workshop and it's all a weird landscape but every time you turn your head it's, things become uh, something else so what i did with the landscape was i didn't know it when i was drawing it i thought i was drawing a tunnel and a fence the main thing I wanted to draw was those slanted bricks that have gardens in the middle of them. Mm-hmm. And I, and I yep. really hate those. Are you talking about it's kind of like a retainer wall yeah. type thing? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I hate them. And I've always hated them. And I, I always sprain my ankle in them when I'm climbing them and dumb shit. And I don't like the concrete they're made out of. Yep. I hate them. But I think if you draw them, they, they somehow become charming. Mm. And um, I wanted to draw one of those wide wire fences that are everywhere and then i wanted to draw people hanging out and i wanted to capture um movement not a lot of it but i wanted the picture to move so i have a guy throwing a rock the whole thing is about target practice it's about accuracy and people celebrating accuracy but what i realized with the landscape was i paint kingsland tunnel combat zone parnell i painted like six or seven different spots that I hang out in. And they all like glued together and blur into one image. And there's a one place that doesn't actually exist, but it does because they've been in all of them. It's more about the feeling and less about accuracy, hmm. even though the painting's about accuracy. And, and what about the um, the most recent one you did with the spade 
Yeah, like that was because uh, the next one I was going to do was I was going to, because I thought graffiti guys would like what I had done, and then I was going to sell another thing, lucky tip, whoever buys my picture gets to have it. So I assumed in my head that a graffiti guy would want something so that I could go down that tunnel mm. and then produce something dark. And I like how spider web in the tunnel, when the light hits it, you can see it. So I was going to do spider webs and, and the demon that is like maybe less of the bright side of hanging out and being a teenager. And a, a lady called Ruth bought the piece of paper. And I don't think Ruth needs to see what it looks like when Optimus Prime fights, you know, Galvatron. So I uh, didn't want to make something so masculine in the backyard. My flatmate Steve, he's really good at spotting lizards. And so we go and look at these lizards. They live on the spade, but they don't anymore. They live on the rake. They love it. They go on the spade. It's warm. They love it. And sometimes you see a lizard with two tails. And so I made two boys. The lady has the twins. She has other children too, but I chose to draw the twins because I feel like I don't know, something about twins. They're throwing darts, which is something about communicating and something about paper, as it's my last piece of paper. Spade, which is trying to talk about that the children are of an age where they might have to work. And then the garden has a frog, because everything is observing you, even if la la la. There's a lot of shit. I filled it with clovers, but I made none of the clovers a four-leaf clover because the lizard's got two tails, and I think that's a good enough horseshoe or rabbit's foot. Don't want to have two lucky things. Too much luck is like too much vitamins, and they burn mm. each other out. What makes good art? The reason why I asked that is because when I look at your illustrations, not only is the the technical aspect of the work look really good. I'm mesmerized by the work. I like the storytelling, I like the characters, I like the technique, I like the I like the meaning behind it. It also feels quite personal. Yeah, well, like, that is my backyard. I had to ask permission from Steve. <laughs> because a lot of those are things that he thinks about. Mm. And it's like, you know, I don't want to be drawing things that he thinks about without him knowing that I'm going over here, I'm going to draw about the frog and the lizards, and it's for this lady, and it's about the twins. And I have been locked in a, in a lockdown, so the amount of time I've spent looking in the backyard is pretty like, ample to be reflected on. Mm. I think like the easiest way to say what makes good art is what TJ McNamara, the New Zealand art critic for the Herald, said. He said good art, about five years, ten years ago. Good art consists of three things, technique, idea, and emotion. Mm. And I believe that to be true, but because I'm like a hippie, I also believe that magic exists and it's a piece of electricity or maybe a heart. I don't know what it is. You can feel it. You can feel it. How do you paint or draw emotion? What do you mean by What's your interpretation of that, that quality? I think if you picked up a rock and said fuck you to the rock and put it down, the rock will carry fuck you until the next person touches it. Mm. And I think you can, um, I think you can push, I don't know if there's enough science on what feelings are and why the wind changes. Like yesterday we all sat in the park and I talked about the time my heart was sore, you talked about a time mm. your heart was sore. And Liam came along and he said, I've just been finishing talking about how my heart was sore yeah. to a man who's got a sore heart. I turned and I looked at that van with people were living in that van and I saw that they too were talking about how their hearts were sore once too. Mm. And I thought, did the wind blow a nostalgic sore heart through a car park? Everyone's feeling sorrow. Yeah, just all at the same time. We all thought, loud, now's the time compelling right yeah i don't know i haven't got an answer because i don't know and and so turning to what you just said before about some of the work um being quite quite reflective of your environment um obviously we've all been going through lockdown at the moment how have you coped during lockdown 
quite well comparatively to other people, yeah. I think. Yeah. Has, has it been nice to have that time to be isolated and focus on doing your work, or what, what have you missed? I miss my family like really strongly and more than I know at the moment. And I find myself a bit confused as to what is causing me to break down and it's usually because I you know, just long to see my mum or my sisters and um, sometimes it manifests in a way that I can read and sometimes it manifests in a way that I can't read and so there's like idle things that I'm used to. I live with a dude and I have a girlfriend but sometimes I feel like I need to talk to a girl that's not my girlfriend. Sometimes I hang out with so many dudes, and when you're a dude duding out duding, you got to keep on duding. You got to always maintain strength. Can't show vulnerability, right? You, you got to be masculine. Yeah, and they tell you be vulnerable, and they're wrong. If you've ever been vulnerable to a dude, they're gonna take advantage of you. Mm. Don't know why. I mean, I, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. it is good to be vulnerable for somebody, but it ain't good for me to be vulnerable. I'm already vulnerable. Yeah. I've got to wear armor. I'm already sensitive. Like, I didn't like it when that guy was going to hit that dude with a bat. Yeah. So, not very good for painting. Drawing a jelly bean and there's a dude going to kill someone else. And you couldn't tell why. And it's not very nice. And if they looked at me, I'd make my back as strong as I could and I'd have to look right back at them. Yeah. You know? yeah. Got to act tough in that moment. For no reason. But I know that it's a good reason. If they walk over you, then they've got to walk over you again. Yes. And then it could be strangers still walk over you. Yeah. I know, well, one thing that I know is that uh, you do some illustrations for a clothing label called Sky Pirates. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, shout outs to Lance hey. and Sky Pirates. Yeah. Um, what do you typically do for, for that? Anything. Lance is not a hard taskmaster unless he needs something in particular. It's very rare that he needs something in particular. He's like, you do you. And if you drawed something that landed in what he felt or deemed very good, you will make something of it. And if not, you will just put it into those files. And I think it's nice. Is that, is that your main day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I do tons of other yeah. stuff. But if what? I get a day off or something like that, I'll give it to Sky Pirates because yeah. it's like, I don't know. Lance is cool and he doesn't try to drink my blood <laughs> so I'm like you yeah. know what's some other commercial work that you do alongside Sky Pirates fuck that's a good question because I don't know I'm making like a flower design for a lady who sells holistic uh, aromatherapy recipes yeah and make a, um, designs for booklets and I make a drawing for the union because they have another something health and safety very dull but you have to make it as exciting as don't you can. do something for dina oh or was that a while ago it's a while ago but if yeah. jamie asks or dina asks i will draw for dana and, and, and jamie and sometimes yeah. they like um we'll just want like a fun drawing yeah and that's kind of cool and i really enjoy it because it's quite challenging sometimes and you know, sometimes you'll have to lean towards maybe something quite gangster, and then sometimes mm. you have to lean towards maybe something specifically designed for them personally. So, yeah. What type of work do you like doing the most? My work. And I don't think that, like, what I learned as of recently by doing those lucky dips, if I don't get orchestrated, if I don't get. If you don't what, sir? If, if, if people don't tell me what to do, I'll do the best thing that I can do for them. Mm. And if they tell me what to do, uh, part of the energy that I have is depleted by instruction. And I think it's best, if you want the best from me, let me be me. And I will give you my best. Mm. But if you want the best from me, but you want a picture of your dog, no, 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 and uh, more words of no, don't ask me to do that, it's rude, and I hate it. One time I had a job and they were like, can you paint our building? And I said, what do you want to paint on your building? They said they want a painting of their building painted on their building. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like depressed, hey, like, just, oh. 
how do I lift my head up now? Uh, it's like you have already a building. Yeah. It's like painting a picture of Rangi Toto when you can see Rangi Toto. Why do you want a picture of Rangi Toto when you can see Rangi Toto with your actual fucking eyes? But like, there's nothing better than the real thing. What oh, the hell? I don't understand what people are on about. Mm. That's why I think it's better just let me be and I'll do the best for you. Yep. I'll do my best. Yep. So. When you do all of these drawings, do you already have an intention that, oh, I'm going to have an exhibition or something like that? Because I know that there are some people that obviously operate in the fine arts world, for example, who are building bodies of work to go exhibit. And I'm, I'm an art, a fine artist. And is that your prerogative? Like, is that what you, why you create work? Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I've had an idea and I build on the idea and I don't show people. Hmm. And sometimes that goes nowhere. And so you've made a small body of work that went nowhere. I've done that lots. Every time I make something, and I'm not trying to be braggadocious, because hmm. I'm very grateful and I, I have to be, because when I make something, somebody will come and take it. Yeah. I think it's it's fine to just let everything go and I'll do my best and I'll let it go. Mm. Like that's just that's graffiti too, you know? Like you can't be hurt when somebody attacks you. Yeah. You know, like because they will. And when you paint on the street and it disappears, just deal with it. It's okay. It's, it's nicer if you don't know who is attacking. Yeah. Because then it's just complete nothing. If you do know who's attacking you, then I guess that would be different. And and so you've got all of this studio work that you're doing. Do you, you still go out and do much outdoor work with spray? Not enough. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was had no spray paint during lockdown. Yeah. I used all of my bucket paint. I used all of my paper. I couldn't get any more paper. So I drew all over my shed. And I can't stop drawing. I'm still drawing on it. Yeah. It's good. It's fun. You should come draw on the shed yeah. and things free up. It's like, come paint on the shed. I'd love it too, because it'd be great to have like more mm. than, you know, yourself. And then like, but no, nah, if I did have a spray can, I would have gone out for sure. And so where you are at the moment, um, doing all your studio work, is there any desire to go paint graffiti? Yeah. It's awesome. I like the swamp. Yep. And, um, because no one's at the swamp and so you can be with, like more of who you are you know like if you're observed a part of you will be aware of being observed and sure. then i can be at my best behavior because i i'm become better if i'm less pressure on me you know? yep all right and i've just got two more questions and then we'll wrap it up the first one is what was the Kind of inspiration for what you painted for this pavilion i know you mentioned it was like driftwood yeah i wanted it to be driftwood i wanted it to be um because i wasn't quite sure what a pavilion is mm. and even though i've seen the photos of it i, I knew that beast was deceptive yep. i wasn't wrong it's a very deceptive beast it's like a thousand staircases super glued together and so you well one staircase beaten up and glued together and then the idea was I wanted this water thing to go on, which I didn't get to do because a man with a knuckle duster and a baseball bat and all that bullshit. And I thought, well, the main thing that I was really trying to achieve was to do some colour because everybody's going in through and out of everything and subtlety is everything. And so you can live your life and walk past a bunch of jelly beans. Maybe it didn't change your day, but it's just an effort to make the change in the day mm. of just colour and care. I care about people that can contribute colour. And my last question to you is, what do you think of the current graffiti scene here in New Zealand? Many or thoughts. Auckland, if, Auckland. You, if you're keeping your eye on it. Still. Well, it's pretty cool, man. For me, now, after a lockdown or what, now people are painting again. Try not and be excited. Walk past Kingsland train track cast your eye it's thrashed it's thrashed and it's so great you know and you don't know who half of anyone is fucking 
yeah and that, that is utterly inspiring you have to contribute you know and you have to clap your hands yeah but now there's a reason to walk everywhere it's a reason it's given you a reason there's blood pumping through it again and there hasn't there's been life. life yeah there's life it's great yeah actually i i don't think everyone's really great i don't think anyone's remarkable i just think everyone's great everyone's remarkable can i shout out sire how do you say his name sire sire yeah he brought some people back to the fold and that tickled my heartstrings so warm very nice you know that's a great yeah. thing absolutely and is there anybody else that's kind of coming up that's maybe caught your attention yeah rams you know, like like what he paints it's mean he's man. going hard right yeah he's really good doesn't pay other people but you know i don't want to blow smoke up anyone that doesn't know me he's ass because fuck them you know <laughs> yeah all right is there anything else you want to talk about well, i have nothing to say really all right love you all though nice to talk all right man thank you so much again uh else for joining us for this month's episode of the pavilion project uh, really awesome to hear your insights and, and you know understand a little bit about what you do and through your art and sharing your views with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you like this content, make sure you like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks guys. Peace.